Good evening. At Hyde Park tonight, we will discuss uh, Sri Lankan pol politics and the economic development from the perspective of a young politician. And tonight, we've invited to our studios a uh, member of parliament representing the United National Party from the Gampaha district, Harshane Rajakarna. Good evening and a warm welcome. Good evening. Thank you for inviting. At Hyde Park, we'd like to discuss about your political career, um, economic development, and um, of course, your party too, as a young politician. But I'd like to start our discussion about your political ca career. Ten years, a decade, you'll be completing next year. And I think uh, you've studied business management uh, outside of the country, in the UK. What brought you to Sri Lanka to, in fact, start a political journey? Yeah, it's been one whole decade for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, long time. Uh, not as long as my father was involved in politics. He was uh, a member of parliament for 33 years. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that is the the, the, uh, the closest connection I have for politics, uh, my father being uh, involved in politics. However, um, I was involved in politics in, in helping out with his campaign when, they were, when there were elections. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was, uh, yes, at uh, University of Nottingham, I did my undergrads uh, and I did my masters at Cardiff. Uh, came back, worked at Sean Keels as an investment advisor for close to five years. Uh, always was helping out my father. So it was, though I lived in Colombo, uh, during the weekend I used to go to my, uh, the, my village, right. my hometown. Uh, Kirin the Vela in Dompe, uh, where my father's uh, electorate and electorate office was there as well. So I used to go there during the weekend and help him out. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in 2009, uh, 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 oh, Prime Minister uh, Ranil Vikram Singh uh, uh, invited me and uh, he said, you know, it's time if you are serious about politics and it's uh, time that you uh, contest for the provincial council. And, uh, and then the day that I gave nominations, I resigned from John Keyes and uh, you know, that was the beginning. Uh, I, uh, but you, you did not have politics in your mind, is it? That was always uh, there okay. uh, because of my father, because right. I was always involved in his life mm -hmm. uh, and helping out du particularly during elections right and also uh, you know during the weekend so because he was getting old and then he needed uh, some uh, family support mm -hmm. and uh, my, my my sisters I have three older sisters uh, my, my brother-in-law we all get involved during an election to help my father out mm -hmm. uh, they do the same thing for me as well uh, and uh, so uh, we, we, that's the reason that I got involved in politics, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I, my ambition was not uh, to get into politics and be yeah. a member of parliament or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, that led to one by one, you know, mm -hmm. one after the other, I right. got involved in it. And the provincial council, I managed to uh, get the second uh, most number of preferential votes mm -hmm. in Gampa district. Then, uh, then I was, uh, Contested, uh, I contested again in, in 2014 mm -hmm. uh, uh, and got the highest number of preferential votes in Gampa district and also became the uh, chief opposition whip in the Western mm -hmm. Provincial Council. Right. And uh, so right after that, within one year, we, we had the parliamentary elections and uh, uh, I contested there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'd like to also ask you whether you're content with the journey you've come so far as a politician, uh, with the kind of work that you've been engaged in and how far you've been able to uh, contribute to uh, the country as a whole. Yeah, I think it was, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I started my career being in the opposition. So uh, the first, uh, first so many years, we were in the opposition, the UMP was in the opposition. Uh, so the my whole time that I was in the provincial council, I was in the opposition and you know, uh, so it was a very gradual thing. It mm -hmm. wasn't just because my father was there, I, I couldn't uh, uh, 
get into the parliament immediately and you know it, it was a very casual thing I came to the provincial council uh, after being in the provincial council for about uh, say six years only I was appointed as the organizer for uh, Dumpe electorate mm -hmm. uh, so then I got the organizership uh, then uh, to the parliament so it was a very gradual thing and uh, especially after uh, the, this three years of the government, being in parliament and being in the government, uh, I was able to deliver uh, quite a lot because it's, you know, when you're in the opposition, it's very hard to deliver. Uh, were you able to deliver what you aspired to deliver while in the opposition when you came to the government? Yes, yes, I, I, would, I would say so. I, I wouldn't say, uh, you know, everything I thought uh, uh, I was able to do because, it, you know, when you're in the opposition, you think uh, that you will be able to do a lot of things. But uh, uh, being in government, then you realize, oh, you know, it's not as easy as uh, uh, what you say when you're in the opposition. Uh, but uh, being in government, you have the opportunity uh, 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 to uh, to do a lot more, and uh, I I I I believe that I have uh, done quite a lot, but there's a lot more to do. Uh, if you talk about your party also as as a strong uh, part of the coalition government, as the unity government, do you think you all have been able to um, deliver as much as you promised, and what uh, the people expected from the change that uh, the people wanted of the election? If you look at the results in the local council election, I don't think people think that we have delivered uh, uh, what we ought to, uh, because we lost pretty badly. Uh, however, I think that has a uh, that does not mean that we haven't done a lot. I think election results alone cannot uh, uh, give one main picture. Uh, we. We, I think we have, for the last three years, we have done a, a lot, a massive amount of work. Uh, uh, you know, some, some things that, as a country, we really needed to do. Like, as soon as we came uh, in, 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 uh, in government, uh, you know, we managed to uh, give uh, uh, quite a lot of, uh, uh, salary hike for the government servants. We were able to bring down the prices of petrol, diesel, uh, kerosene. You know, we man we doubled some of the, we doubled uh, the elders, uh, uh, the, the, the subsidy that we give. We did uh, quite a lot. And then after that, after the uh, August 17th, when we came uh, back in government, uh, the things that we have done, I think, especially when it comes to education, when it comes to health, when we, when it comes to housing, I think we have done a tremendous amount of work. Uh, uh, you know, health. I don't think any government has done uh, as much as this. We managed to bring down prices of medicine. Now we give. Uh, Free uh, lenses, free uh, for for heart surgeries, tents. The 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 limit that has uh, that was there for uh, cancer patients, which was uh, just 15 lakhs, was removed, and now we spend as much as possible. Uh, you know, the 1990, the ambulance service. Uh, those are some great things that we have done. Health, uh, education, you know, the, the insurance scheme that we have provided, the Suraksha, the insurance scheme where every student in Sri Lanka is insured. Uh, you know, the amount of money that we spend on education, and, and I know, uh, two yesterday morning I had a meeting with the zonal education uh, officials and the principals. Mm -hmm. The, the amount of money that we have been spending on, on new buildings, all the resources that is needed for a school, uh, we have spent a lot of money. S housing, you know, I, I think uh, this housing ministry I is 
active again. You know, we we see so many housing com housing uh, uh, um, complexes coming up. So the housing loans that we provide, especially these three sectors, I, I would say I would say you know uh, the road development that we have done is is remarkable. Uh, we have especially for these three sectors i think we have we have done uh, a, a lot however i don't think this message is given or communicated properly is that uh, i think that is a that is a problem is that is that uh, part, do partly due to the government's failure to have a proper uh, mechanism to totally. put the word out totally why why would you say that i mean wha I wha wha what what should government the government do differently no the thing is now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you an example. Moraga Khanda project. It's six times bigger than the Parakram Samudra. Six times bigger. Can you remember when it was inaugurated? There were cutouts even in Colombo. This was done somewhere else, but everywhere it was the posters were there, the cutouts were there. The, the the media was uh, uh, you know correctly uh, advised, but ninety five percent of the the Murugakan, the project was completed by this government. But we have now opened it. Nobody knows about it. Even in no, say in Colombo, nobody knows about it. The amount of, of the uh, what a magnificent uh, investment that has been. So, likewise, uh, you know, a few days ago, uh, you know, I asked this particular person uh, whether they knew that your, your, uh, that uh, all children who are schooling are insured. Unfortunately, they don't know about it. So, there is a big communication uh, lack from the government's point of view. But there was also, while you were in the opposition, the United National Party, uh, there was a lot of criticism about the government's development drive. But do you think this government has been able to match that development drive? Has there been uh, a, a progressive development drive? No, I think there has been a, 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 a remarkable uh, development drive. However, there is a problem uh, in delays. I, I, I accept that because when you try to do it in the right mechanism, the right order, the delay is there, right? Say there's uh, there's this uh, road to be developed. Those days there were no tenders. This road can be developed by A, B, or C. But now. If there's a road is, if if, the, if there's a road to be developed, you have to do a tender procedure, which takes a good six months, or or, or a bit less, or le more or less six months. So there is a delay, but on the other hand, when the, even though there is a delay, the country is saving a lot of money. Also, you know because you are giving to the lowest bid, most likely. So does this mean the government has been able to effectively wipe out corruption or any sort of mismanagement within the system? I think it's impossible to totally eliminate corruption. Uh, I don't think it is possible. I don't think it's, uh, 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 it's there anywhere in the world. But I think it's minimal now. I think it's uh, a lot less now. So it's always comparative, you know. Uh, so it, I think it's a lot less now. I wouldn't say it's totally not there, but it's a lot less, yes. Uh, we were talking about corruption, and I think uh, when talking about good governance and corruption in uh, the three-year term of this government, something that comes to mind is um, the infamous bond scheme. Uh, your involvement about uh, phone calls to Arjuna Loishis of uh, the Perpetual Treasuries Limited, how do you characterize this aspect? Because I, are you are you still in denial that you were in touch with Arjuna Loyishis? Oh no, no, okay. no, I have never denied that. 
Right. And I have never denied that. I have, I have known Arjun Aloysius for a During the court proceedings, in fact. Not, not during the court proceedings. E even before I got into politics, I had known him. So it's 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 uh, it's a it's a, it's a generation uh, that I have known, father, grandfather. So we have known each other for a long time. So the number of calls that I have made is probably far great, far more uh, before than uh, when I was in politics because I in pol I'm, I was probably a bit too busy to call uh, than uh, when I was not in politics. So. Mm -hmm. I've uh, always said that I have spoken to him, but it's nothing to do with uh, uh, the the uh, bond issue or, or helping out. But I think the concern was also about uh, the phone calls that were made during your uh, involvement in court proceedings. Yes, so the court proceeding was there for over a year. So that does not mean that I have uh, to not communicate with a person that I know. Absolutely, there's nothing. I mean, there are. So many people that who come to the uh, court proceedings and where we talk to each other, but this was a very media uh, hype thing, and then it was th probably the only thing that was able to attack the UMP and the government. So uh, indirectly, we were <laughs> we were in the uh, court committee, and all of this was highlighted. But uh, it's nothing to do with uh, uh, the bond issue at all. I have known him, and I've never denied it, and. Uh, I have nothing to hide. Uh, there is also concern and uh, uh, widespread discussion that the government has not a been able to, yes, earlier, due, just before the break you said, uh, corruption, yes, we cannot bring it down to a maximum, but uh, there is concern and voices, uh, the public voices being heard about the government's lack of um, effort to crack down on corruption to the fullest as promised and as, as promised to bring instill uh, a regime of good governance? No, I think what we have done is far more than any other government has done. I think uh, this, this government, you know, you look at even the bond issue. You know, there were, there were uh, COPE hearings, there were pub, uh, parliamentary debates, then there was a presidential commission. Now people are in custody in, in the jail. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think that would be possible if it was any other government. W look at the, the incident where the president's chief of staff uh, had, uh, ac ac you know, had uh, been caught uh, accepting a bribe. Now, you, do you think that this was ever possible before? No, I, I don't think. I don't think. So, me, you know, maybe that we have not been able to total, totally eradicate it but now we have uh, we have been able to uh, and and uh, we, we have cut down quite a lot uh, people are scared of uh, bribing people are scared of accepting bribe people are scared of doing something wrong because c compared to then and now then uh, you know if it was Politi if you were politically connected, even if you murder somebody, there was a good chance that you would be uh, out. But unfortunately now, uh, the institutions are very independent and very strong. The bribery commission, the police, the CID, the FCID, all, all these uh, independent commissions, even the judiciary. You know, I'm sorry to say, you know, people were... Uh, not ha not happy with the judiciary then. Now people believe that there's uh, there's a independent ju judiciary. People think people believe in uh, law and order. So yes, I accept that it's not hundred percent eradicated, but I think it's uh, it has reduced and uh, we are on the right path. Uh, again, talking about the same matter before we move on for more, about uh, former Central Bank Governor Arjuna Mahindran, and I think, is it is it a lack of initiative or is it a lack of proper mechanism to bring him down? It is an uh, international uh, issue now. So, so there's, uh, you know, when you're living abroad, it's not like you're, when you're living here. It's the same case, not only with uh, Arjuna Mahindran, but few others like very closely associated Rajapaksa, uh, the Russian 
ambassador then uh, then uh, the american ambassador uh, then uh, you know it's the same thing they are, they are, they are, they are they are also being called uh, uh, by the courts in Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, they they have been hiding outside the country, and so has Arjuna Mahindra. Uh, shifting your attention to uh, revolts within the United National Party, particularly coming from backbenchers calling for a party restructuring process. Uh, as a young and budding politician, I mean, you're also the chairman of the Young Professionals Organization. We'll talk more on that, but what do you have to say th about uh, the parties, the direction that the party is heading? Are you satisfied with that as a young party member and politician? Actually, I'm not uh, happy 100%, I have to be honest. Uh, um, I think that uh, UMPs had a lot of hope, Sri Lankans have had a lot of hope. We have been able to deliver a lot, uh, but not as much as people expected. Uh, I, we have two more years. I hope that we can deliver a lot more within the next two years. Uh, particularly when it comes to UMPs, UMPs were in opposition for 20 years. Uh, our supporters were suffering, politically victimized. Uh, we, our supporters were not able to get jobs. Our supporters were not able to uh, get the promotions they were. Uh, they should have got. Uh, so we, the the UN peers were very very much uh, uh, in a in a in a in a very bad situation when we got into the government. So they had a lot of hope. Unfortunately, with this joint uh, UMP SLFP uh, uh, government, we have not been able to solely focus on the UN peers. And uh, we have uh, SLFP ministers, so you know very openly uh, those SLFP ministers would look after the SLFP uh, workers more than the UMP workers, which have been politically victimized. So, so the still you know it has become three years. We still have not been able to fulfil all the political victimisation, all the issues. Uh, so. Uh, there's a lot more for the UMP to do when it comes to uh, helping out the uh, uh, main grassroots level UMP cadres. When you say you're not satisfied, do you, do you want a change and in some aspect within the party or? Uh, no, it particularly to me, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think that uh, a person can uh, change everything. I think it has to be a change in the mechanism, how, how we, the system, how we uh, do it. So, taking off uh, Prime Minister Anil Vikram Singh and, and putting someone else and we are doing the same thing wouldn't make a difference. So, uh, you know, there's a, I am a loyal UMP. Uh, I, 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 whoever is in the UMP heading the UMP, I'll be uh, very loyal to that person. Uh, so the the leaders, uh, the, you know, they should make the decisions. We are we are backbenchers. Uh, we we are, we can't make decisions. So if uh, we if they say Ranil Vikram Singh uh, is the leader, I I will go with that. But uh, you know, there should be a mechanism to listen to the masses, to listen to the grassroots level. Uh, so uh, the decisions should be taken uh, amongst the the top tier of the UMP and uh, uh, make those right changes and make those right changes and then we will deliver it. Right. Now this revolt that we were talking about within the UNP was met uh, by uh, what one might call due re uh, reward for their troubles. But do you think these monitoring MP titles that we given later were given on due merit uh, to, to everyone? I think these monitoring MPs uh, uh, should have been given three years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite late that why, they gave. Why would you say that? Because it's three years of the government has gone, so there's only one and a half to two years more. But is there is there a lot of work that has been done by these monitoring MP positions? No, I, I think that they are, they were just appointed mm -hmm. probably about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So so you, it's right. very very uh, too early to mm -hmm. say whether they have uh, they they have done what. 
they should have done. But I believe that they should have uh, uh, they should have been assigned uh, ministries to monitor three years ago. So they, we were, you know make use of us. That's my point. You know we have got involved, got into politics. You know now we are full-time politicians. Yes, we are n newcomers. We are juniors. We are the backbenchers. But uh, we can do a lot. I, I think uh, we can deliver a lot. Before so we go in for a short break, again, I think I'd like to talk about the tourism industry. You are the monitoring MP for the tourism ministry, and uh, there's a lot of work that Sri Lanka needs to do in terms of destination marketing. We are planning to attract, and there are so many tourists into the country, we have targets. But do you think our infrastructure and um, uh, all that we need to be a proper um, tourist destination is in place, be it this government, the previous government or governments to come. As a nation, do we have that policy framework? I think, uh, uh, you know, tourism probably is the key industry for Sri Lanka in the future, even right now. Uh, you know, I think that, I think in another few years time, that will be the biggest foreign exchange, foreign exchange earning industry. It will be tourism. So, f to answer your question, whether we are all done or everything's done to be the number one destination, no. But I'm very happy about the progress that we have been uh, uh, doing in the uh, tourism ministry. The tourists, uh, the, the few, the boards that are uh, headed by Ms. Kavan Ratnayak and Mr. Senevi Ratna, uh, you know, they're doing a fabulous job. Uh, uh, we we have a lot to do. We have we have a lot to do when it comes to promoting. Uh, we have a lot to do to when it comes to uh, make it a very friendly uh, destination for tourists. Uh, infrastructure, you know, a lot more to do. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have so much in this country uh, where we can sell. You know, we, we have the wildlife. We have the lovely beaches. We, we have culture, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, 2,500 years history, you know, what we can offer is uh, a lot uh, compared to, say, Maldives, compared to uh, uh, another, another country. Uh, so, yes, we need to sell that product, we need to put everything together and sell that product and we have been, uh, uh, we have been doing it. Uh, but we have to do it a lot more aggressively, I would right. say. Uh, as a monitoring MP of the ministry, what is your authority? Do you have authority to make changes, to suggest changes, recommendations, if, if we try to understand your role? Actually, it is uh, monitoring. When you are a monitoring MP, you have to work with the relevant minister. minister. Uh, so it is a joint effort. It's a team effort. It's, it's something where we... Uh, uh, we have been assigned to do certain things on behalf of the minister. Say now, yesterday actually, I was uh, on the way from Norelia today. Uh, we, I was assigned to go and visit the rest houses, which uh, which is owned by the uh, tourist board. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a uh, it's effort that we put uh, as a, as a team to uh, maximize and deliver. Uh, uh, the best for when it comes to uh, that particular ministry. Right, but uh, also does it now, now the Sri Lankan tourism industry itself we failed throughout to uh, show our tourists basic facilities even when we talk about uh, destinations like Sigiri, the lack of uh, toilets within the facility these things have discouraged our tourists and also uh, matters controversial matters recently the Gaul International Cricket Stadium Gaul a UNESCO site and uh, international tourist destination and Mirissa have do you think these uh, incidents have challenged uh, the industry and the arrivals that we expect as a destination you know, I think the biggest problem when it comes to tourism is, is, you know, to promote tourism, tourism ministry alone can't do it. Now, for example, I think uh, the Bandar Naik International Airport has, uh, has to have another terminal. You know, it's, it's over, there's overcapacity now. Uh, 
you know the facilities at the airport is minimal so can the tourism ministry do anything about it unfortunately not because that's again a, a different ministry so we have what we have done is we have uh, uh, prime minister under the uh, under prime minister we have uh, had a uh, task force uh, where we get you know all the relevant people together so uh, you know it's it's we have uh, we have been able to uh, do a lot within the last three years i i would say we 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 have been able to do a lot that should have happened long time ago because especially after the war 2009 you know after 2009 it, you know the war was the biggest issue for tourism so when we got that out of the picture uh, you know tourism uh, should have been boosted a lot more it should have been uh, uh, you know the the number of now it, it it is improving now it is improving and it is improving very fast as well my question is also whether the policy framework the the question about policy direction is that in place really to do what we uh, envisaged okay. To, to interleave be, to be these honest, ministries, if, as you yeah, say, to be, you, the tourism ministry needs support. But is the government has the government interlinked these ministries, yes. and is there support in that sense? No, you um, know, if if I am very honest, I think that uh, it should happen very fast. Unfortunately, that is how uh, uh, the government institutions are. And we really need to change that. We really need to change that bureaucracy, the red tape, to make a decision how long it takes. So, the the, the problem uh, now is that uh, the delay. So now we we have we have done we have done uh, quite a bit. We have done uh, things that uh, you know should have happened six years ago. We have made these difficult decisions. We have got into the right track, uh, but. Uh, it takes a long time when it's public money, when you're dealing with public money. You have to uh, take those procedures. If not, you know, there'll be a big issue. I, I believe that we have to spend a lot more. We have the money also. We have the money also. We have to spend a lot more in promoting. Say, uh, you know, we have got the CNN uh, uh, advertising campaign going on. I, I think that's brilliant, but uh, that that covers a certain sector. But we need to look at f few countries that we need to promote, and we need to uh, uh, advertise digitally, uh, advertised when it comes to local uh, uh, TV channels and and magazines and so on. So. Now, with the greatest difficulty, the, digi the digital advertising is almost at the end. So, we have been doing uh, uh, partly, uh, but uh, uh, I wish it was faster. Moving on to some uh, political matters, I think, uh, talking about the looming presidential election in 2020, there are a lot of uh, concerns and views expressed. Some messages coming out of the UNP suggest that um, leader, Prime Minister Rana Wickremesinghe, will um, be the UNP's presidential candidate. But also, um, there isn't a denial of moving for a common candidate like the two previous occasions. But if this continues to happen as a young politician once again, how would you feel? Does it mean that the UNP will be piggybacking on um, popular uh, personalities in the country? I think the number one thing is we have to win the election. So it has to be a candidate who can get the majority. The, la the last lo lo the local council election, uh, we the 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 port tour, the the uh, the flowerbud party. Mm. Yeah, I can't even remember the name of the party. Anyway, how, however, they got forty-four percent. So, which means fifty-six percent are still against them. They got forty-four percent, and they won the elections. We got thirty-eight or something like that. Uh, so, uh, forty-four percent, but fifty-six percent is still against against them. That means so we have to have a candidate that can attract that 56 percent that's you know bottom line simple words that is the 
a candidate that we need. Yes, I would prefer a UMP candidate. That is personal, but whatever the party makes uh, a decision, I'll, I'll, I'll be with the party's decision. However, uh, yeah, the UMP is a bit uh, uh, disappointed uh, with these common candidates. Uh, 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 but uh, I, yes, personally would like uh, a UMP uh, candidate, but 1.5 million uh, SLFP votes is co very significant when it comes to a presidential election. So uh, it has to be a person who can get all those groups together. Moving forward, it will also be about the kind of work that your party will be doing within uh, of course, uh, your, uh, certainly. Yes. So that 38% yes. we need to, these two years need to increase it, not decrease it. Uh, if it, uh, before we wind up, I think uh, about economics and uh, public institutions, I think this has also been your forte. Uh, what have you got to say about uh, public enterprises? We spoke about the bureaucracy within, but uh, if you talk about Sri Lankan Airlines, uh, we're still looking for um, an investor. And then, uh, there's a lot of concern by the UNP itself about Maktala and Hambantara. But what real measures do you see are needed to revive these public entities? Because it's a lot of public money there. Oh, it's a huge, huge lot of money, especially when it comes to Sri Lankan Airlines. You know, it's, we, have, we are finding it so difficult to find investors. Just imagine how, how, how bad it is. So public enterprises, you know, it's difficult for government to do business. I personally believe that it should be, uh, you know, government should be uh, a watchdog, the authority. But, uh, uh, you know, that does not mean that we need to privatize everything. So, you know, one minute, if I, when, when I say this, you know, uh, they might think, okay, uh, he's looking at privatization. No. Now, for example, Sri Lanka Telecom. I can remember not too long ago, couple of decades ago, uh, you had to stay in a, in a uh, waiting list to get a telephone connection, right? You had to stay at a waiting list for months and years probably. But you know, now 51 percent is with the government, 49 percent is with the private sector, management decisions are taken by the private sector, but we have boomed in that industry. Not only that, uh, you know, other other service providers have come, and we have boomed in that. Look at uh, uh, how Bank of Ceylon and People's Bank were 20 years ago or 30 years ago. The private sector uh, uh, banks like Commercial Bank, HNB, Ceylon, Sampat, they have all come, and now uh, actually, I'm happy to say that Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, NSP, National Savings Bank, though those are in par with the private sector banks. So we need competition for for these people and for uh, 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 go, uh, for government uh, uh, enterprises. And also we need private sector uh, involvement. That does not mean I specifically mentioned that it is hundred percent privatization, but uh, the management decisions and things like that uh, should be. Uh, with, with the private sector as well. Also, as far as the economy goes, I think in the past three years we have had our GDP growth reducing, and this year we are not expecting anything more than 4.5 to 5, if I'm not mistaken, as per central bank uh, estimates of growth. But does this mean that Sri Lanka is if we, we're stagnated? What's really crunching the economy? I think the main reason. Uh, when it come when it came to the 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 uh, economic growth uh, is last year last two years we were f you know suffering with uh, the floods we were suffering with uh, the drought uh, it it was not an easy thing especially when it comes to agriculture with these two uh, scenarios we we suffered a lot and not only in the in ag agriculture sector, but all, most of the sectors, even when it came to tourism, all these issues, though there was uh, uh, significant growth in tourism, but the the flooding and uh, which which came, you know, last two years, it, 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 there were floods twice. So uh, the the drought was 
the worst in, in so many years, so many decades. So yes, we had to suffer uh, when it comes to economic growth. I think now, uh, this year, we will come close to 5%, hopefully. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, this will be uh, growing even more from the next year and the year after. But I think also the president, uh, President Maitripala Sirisena, uh, has, has blamed your party's policies at several locations for the, the, the challenges faced in the economy. I don't think that uh, if he had blamed it, he, we, I think uh, we are all to be blamed. If when it comes to uh, uh, government, we are all together. He's the president, uh, my party lead is the prime minister. Uh, <coughs> he's the head of the cabinet. Uh, my, pa my party leader is, is the premier in, in the cabinet. Uh, so if we had made uh, wrong decisions, we all have uh, made wrong decisions. It, you can't blame one person and, and, and say the other person is uh, right and the other place is, person is wrong. Right. So before we uh, wind up again, I'd like to ask you, um, a Master of Business, uh, business Management, uh, and uh, you have a seat in Parliament with less than 10 years worth of political experience. Uh, apart from the common uh, chorus of what the country, where the country should go, what can you offer? I think it's, it's, it's a change of attitude. I, I think it's a very difficult thing, but if, uh, I think if we can move this country forward, to move this country forward very fast, we need a change of attitude. We are still very dependent. Uh, the best of our people are going abroad, right? The brain drain is, is significant. The best of the labor force is going abroad. I mean. You know, so many people come uh, on my public day and uh, ask whether they can go to Israel, whether they can go to Korea. So we need to build uh, an economy which attracts, especially the locals, right? If when we need to build an economy where we uh, export, where we are manufacturing here, n where we have skilled labor. Uh, where, where uh, you know, you don't need to go for a eighty thousand rupees salary abroad, and if you can get a uh, get get the same salary in Sri Lanka, so we need to create that economy, the manufacturing export oriented economy. I think that is the only way to increase this growth, increase the uh, government income, and with that to benefit uh, all, all the grassroots level. Right, I think uh, that uh, wraps up this week's edition of At Hyde Park. Thank you very much uh, for your time and presence here. Thank you very much. We had with us uh, the UNP Gampaha District Parliamentarian, Harshana Rajakaruna, joining us. We'll see you again next Thursday at the same time at Hyde Park. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. <laughs>